When I was in my 20s, I got sucked in big time to this financial trap that held up my progress to becoming wealthy. Now this is something that I know that I'm not alone in. In fact, a lot of Kiwis have traveled down the same path that I did back then, and I'm sure they're not aware of the damage that this wealth killer is actually doing. In today's video, I'm gonna explain exactly what this wealth killer is. I'll be sharing all the ways that this wealth killer is sucking money from your life and stopping you from growing your wealth. Make sure you stick around till the end because I'll be sharing some tips to help you lessen the blow to your wealth or actually help you avoid this wealth killer altogether and help you become wealthy faster. As always, feel free to skip around the timestamps to save time. Let's get into it. So first up, let's look at what this wealth killer actually is. If you have a garage, go take a look right now as you might find it. Yes, it's a brand new car specifically purchased on finance. Let's dive a bit deeper into how financing a car actually sets you back. Interest rates when you finance a car are typically around 11 to 12%. However, they broadly range from between 9% to 19%. At the moment in New Zealand, if you specifically buy an EV or a hybrid type vehicle, some of the banks are offering a special 1% rate fixed for three years. For the purpose of today, I'm gonna to use an interest rate that I found on a car financing website of 11.70%. This is gonna help us to calculate what our repayments are gonna be and also how much our loan is gonna cost us. So first of all, I have looked up what the most popular car to purchase in New Zealand is at the moment. And it looks like for the past few years, Toyota RAV4 has taken the top spot. So for today, I'll be using this car as our example car to work with. I went onto Toyota's website and looked up RAV4s there are quite a few different ones, but the new hybrid models range from around 49,000 to 60,000. For today, I'll look at financing the cheapest model, which is $48,790. I'm gonna round up just for ease of simplicity and just call it 49,000. Let's say you were wanting to finance the full amount of the car to keep our calculations simple. Usually you pay down a cash deposit to secure the car, and this can range from $1,000 to $2,000. But for today, let's imagine we're gonna finance the full amount of the car at $49,000. Now, if we put this into the calculator on the MTF website, which is a car financer here in New Zealand, and we calculate it over a five year term, this means that our weekly repayments are gonna be around $300 a week, fortnightly repayments $600, and monthly payments come out, out at around $1,300. If we scroll down, we can have a look at the other fees and charges that are gonna be applied. So a few other sneaky things to be aware of here. Now, there is usually a loan establishment fee, and in this case, it's $389. There's also the securities register fee, which is $10, and then there is also a monthly maintenance fee. Now, at the bottom here, it gives us an estimate that you will end up paying around $62,453 in total. Now, this is a huge jump from the $49,000 cost of the car. In fact, it's costing us over $13,000 more. These are all things to be aware of when you're looking to finance a car. There can be these sneaky extra fees that you need to be mindful of. Something that car finances usually offer is that you can also capitalize these fees to the loan. What this means is that these fees get added onto your loan and then you're gonna end up paying extra interest on these extra fees. So this is just something to keep in your mind as well. Make sure you read the fine print before you sign anything if you're gonna finance a car and make sure you completely understand exactly what you're getting yourself into. The next thing to keep in mind when buying a brand new car is that these cars are going to depreciate and fast. As soon as you drive a brand new car off the lot, it's going to immediately depreciate by 10 to 15% as soon as you leave the parking lot. And then it's gonna continue depreciating every year. So let's look back at our RAV for example. So you've paid $49,000 for it. Let's say it depreciates by conservatively 10% as soon as you drive it out of the parking lot. So this is $4,900 lost on the RAV4 straight away. So now, as soon as you leave the parking lot, it's only worth $44,100. It continues to depreciate every year. After five years, it's expected that the Toyota RAV4 will depreciate by 36.1%. So after five years is up, it's worth only around $31,000. That's a big fall from the $49,000 that you paid only five years ago. In fact, you've lost around $18,000 to depreciation. The next cost that you need to be aware of when owning a car, and not just a brand new car, but any car, is the ongoing costs. First up, let's look at the cost to actually run the car. So first of all, you'll have to pay for the petrol if you have a petrol car, or if you've got an EV or a hybrid that needs charging, then you need to pay for the charging costs. Let's say you've got a petrol car and you spend conservatively around $100 a week on petrol, 
This means over the course of a year, it's gonna cost you $5,200 in petrol. Over five years, that's $26,000 in petrol if you're spending $100 a week over five years while you've got your car loan. If you have an EV or a plug-in vehicle, then you need to factor in the cost to charge this. It's currently estimated to be the equivalent of around 30 cents worth of petrol. So that's approximately $300 a year. This obviously can vary a bit in both the EVs and the petrol cars, it depends on how much driving you're doing each year. If you're spending $300 a year, then over five years, that's gonna be around $1,500, so significantly cheaper than the petrol car. However, in New Zealand, if you have an EV or a hybrid car, you now have to pay road user charges. So this is another cost that you have to factor in. These charges do vary vehicle to vehicle, so I won't add the costs in here, but I will link a website down below if you're interested in this and want to look into it further. The next thing you need to look at is insurance for your car. At a minimum, it's recommended that you have third party insurance so that you're covered if you crash into somebody else. However, for today, let's be sensible and we're gonna get full insurance for our RAV4. I entered the RAV4 into a few different car insurance websites and the cheapest one that I came back with was around $2,000 a year. So if we imagine that we have to pay $2,000 a year over five years, that's another $10,000 worth of ongoing costs towards our RAV4. Keep in mind that insurance usually goes up year on year as well. So if we do a quick total up on our RAV4 over the five years, we've spent $62,000 financing the car. Conservatively, we've spent another $1,500 running it without factoring in the road user charges as well. So this is gonna be a bit higher. And then we spent another $10,000 insuring it. So it's safe to say we've now spent around $74,000 on our RAV4 over the five years. But wait, there are more costs that need to be added on. Your car needs to be roadworthy, so you're gonna need to get a warrant of fitness. In New Zealand, brand new cars come with a warrant of fitness for the first three years, and then you need to get a warrant of fitness every year after that. So for two years, after our first three years are up, we're gonna need to pay for a warrant of fitness. And this is around $50 to $60. Let's say it's $50. That's another $100 we need to spend on our RAV4. Another thing you need to do is also register your car. The cost of this for our RAV4 hybrid at the moment is $235 a year. So over five years, imagining this cost doesn't change, this is another $1,175 we have to spend on our RAV4. So if we add these two extra costs to our $74,000, we're now up over $75,000. Now, if your car doesn't pass its warrant of fitness, there may be some repair work that you need to do to your car. This is gonna cost more money. On top of this, you should get your car serviced every year or every certain amount of kilometers traveled if you're doing more driving. Sometimes brand new cars come with free servicing for a certain period of time, which is great and this will save you a bit of money. I looked on Toyota's website to get an idea of what servicing could be and it seems to range between $305 to $1,600, depending on what you're gonna get done. Let's imagine that we're sort of in the middle of that and spend $800 a year on servicing. So over five years, it means we're gonna be spending around $4,000 on servicing. However, we all know that sometimes things break or go wrong with our cars, and we need to spend a bit more on repairs and maintenance. This means it's a little bit hard to actually estimate what this cost could be. I personally estimate that our RAV4 is gonna cost us somewhere between $80,000 and $100,000 over the five years. Keep in mind that costs do increase as well, like insurance seems to increase year on year. The current road user charges could increase as well. Petrol prices and electricity prices do increase frequently too. It's actually kind of crazy how much one car can set you back over five years when you add up the total costs. Imagine if you didn't have those costs and you instead invested that $100,000 over those five years, how much that money would grow. So I promise some tips if you are gonna go down this path to help you reduce your costs. So obviously the first one is to just not buy a car at all. Instead, you could spend money on public transport to get around if you needed to. This could save you a lot of money over the five years that you could instead invest to grow your wealth. The next tip is to buy a car with cash instead of financing it. However, I do understand that a lot of people do not have $50,000 lying around that they want to spend on a car. So that's where financing a car comes in. Now there are some ways that you can save some money on financing a car. The first way is to reduce the amount that you're gonna finance. So how you do this is put in a large cash deposit towards the vehicle and then finance the balance. The less you put on finance, the better. This also means the more you will save on interest over the term of your loan. The next way to reduce your interest cost 
else, it's to reduce your term of your loan. So instead of taking out a five year loan term, instead opt to take out a two or a three year loan term. The key here is just to make sure that you can afford the weekly repayments on the shorter loan term. The next way to save on costs is to buy a car that isn't a brand new car, instead opting for a second hand car. You could look for something that's around three to five years old and still in good condition. This means that most of the depreciation has already been factored in. The cost of the car will be less than a brand new car, so we'll save you some money. Whatever option you choose to go with, make sure that if you're signing a contract that you take the time to read it and understand it, make sure that you go over the fine print. Make sure that all the costs that are involved are laid out for you so that you know exactly what you're signing up for. If you wanna hear more about my experience with this big financial mistake, I'll link the video up over here so you can check that out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.